Hi, welcome to my studio. I'm Barbara Swift and you're watching Be Swift Art. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted this. Super soft, shimmery holiday painting, all done in watercolor. This episode is loaded with lots of new tips and tricks for you to learn, so let's get started. Okay, today I'm using my Magello Mission Gold paints. This color is permanent red for red poinsettia. You want to take a thick consistency of your paint mixed with water. So it's almost the consistency of like heavy cream, um, pretty thick. So you still want it to be able to move, but you want it to bead up on the top of your paper. So keep adding until you get a nice little ball sitting on top of the paper. And just putting in some more here. Because we're going to make each petal from just that one dot. I'll raise it up so you can see it a little better. Go slow so you don't get dizzy. Can you see how that paint is raised up off of the paper? That's what you're looking for. Kind of remind you of those little dot candies when you're a kid on a paper. Little half moons of candy. Well, we got half moons of paint here. So get your brush wet and just using a round brush, stick the tip right into that dot and then bring it back to make your petal. And then you can go ahead and fill it in using just that paint that's from that dot. There. Rinse your brush off, get some clean water, and move on to the next one. So we're going to do the same thing going all around the flower. So my little poinsettias. I'm just getting some water and bringing that into the paint there on the tip and bringing it down so that it's completely filled in. And the other one didn't have quite enough paint on it, so I'll just add a little bit from my brush. And this is the third petal. There'll be five petals, five dots. Just getting a little bit more water and then filling it in. So there you go. You can see I've got five. So I rinsed my brush off and now I'm just getting it dry. So it's just a barely damp brush and I'm just mopping up the center of that petal. So the idea is to leave a darker outline around the outside. There's two different ways you can do this. By just mopping it up, I'm getting a softer effect. And then in the next flower, I'll show you the second way. So this one, I'm just mopping it out, drying my brush in between on my paper towel and just go around the whole flower and do the same thing. And that makes kind of a soft outline when you do it that way. And I'm going to show you how to do it another way here on the second flower. So I'm doing exactly the same thing as I did on the first flower. My five dots of red raised up off the paper just with a damp brush spreading it out to make all of my petals. So remember the first one I just wiped it out I'm showing you that again, just wiping it out. And because I used a little bit more paint on this one than I did the first one, you can see you can get a darker flower, darker effect, just by wiping it out. I'll show you one more time there. So this is with more paint. Just wiping it out. So everything is still wet. Okay, so on this next one, I'm going to show you the second way, and that's to add water to it first and then start wiping it out. What happens when you add water to it first? The water is thinner than the paint is, and it will push all the paint, the pigment, away from the water, so it'll end up just on the edges. See, that's what I'm doing here. And it gets a little bit darker of an outline when you do it this way. So your choice, whatever you like to do. I'm using my sable round brush, so whatever 
size is comfortable for you, you can use that brush. It doesn't have to be sable. But what I like about sable is that it soaks it up really nice. Whereas synthetic brush doesn't quite hold as much water or soak up as much water. But the synthetic brush is a little bit more snappy, if you want, if you will. You know, so when you're using it, the brush doesn't isn't so soft. It has a little resilience to it. So that makes it easier. And we're just going to repeat the process now that they're dry. Come back and put five more dots on. And I'm just going around doing the same thing. And I am going a little bit heavier with my paints. I put bigger dots on there. And now I'm taking my water and adding it to the top and mopping it out. So now just so that we could speed it up a little bit, that's all three of the flowers. You can see the outline. And the very last layer, I'm only going to put three petals on. But what's kind of fun about this technique is you can see the petals underneath. So it's like a transparent or a glass flower. So I'm just putting three on. Okay, so now I'm finishing up the three. So you can see, you can see I put them kind of in a C shape or a zigzag shape. You don't want to line them up straight up and down or straight side by side because they look to arrange that way. You want it to look a little bit more natural. So whenever you can get a curve in your painting, curves are always better than straight lines. It makes it more interesting. So I'm just dabbing in some centers with the green little poinsettias and this is a new set of paints I just got by Paul Rubin it's pearlized and metallic paints I love the way they package these paint sets it's so pretty and their little soft cloth and the little pink tin it makes you feel so special there's where I played around with it on black paper they really show up good on black paper so they got extra shine on black paper not quite as much on the white paper but for what we're doing here, we're just going to add just a little bit of shimmer to our painting. So here's all the colors and what they look like. They come in those little half pans. And you can snap them in and out. So whenever you need to replace the color, you can order just a little pan of color. So you're using the same way. You're going to activate them with water. Or you're just your wet brush and kind of mix yourself a little puddle there. And I'm using my double zero. And I'm going to go in for this soft yellow. And I'm just going to put that right on top of my green dots. So these metallic paints are more opaque than the other watercolors where, where they're transparent. Because it has like mica powder in there or ground up pearls in the pearlescent one. You could use darker red or gold if you want. So I thought I'd put a little bit of gold in between them. Whoops, I dropped my paintbrush. <laughs> oh, no problem. We'll just dab that up. As long as it's wet, just put a little water on it real quick. Dab it up, and it won't harm anything. Can't even see it. So I'm going to start now with the white poinsettias. And I'm going to use uh, lime green. And it's called, uh, let's see, what's it called? It's called yellow green in the Magello palette. And... I put the lime green dots in there, or yellow green dots, and then I used my little pearl metallic paint from Paul Rubens on there. And I'm doing the same kind of thing. I did put a little bit more green on the tips of the petals just to give it a little bit of contrast with the white paper underneath. In hindsight, I probably should have just left them all kind of more shimmery and darker because it does kind of blend in a lot with the white once it dries because watercolor always dries lighter so I got to keep that in mind but I'm doing the same exact procedure as I did on the red flowers here and I speed it up for you because it would take four hours for you to watch this whole thing if I didn't but I'm just doing the same thing and going around putting three layers of petals on my poinsettias and wiping them out using some water so even though this is pretty light, it's going to show up a little better in the end because I'm going to put more greenery around it and that'll pop out those white flowers. 
So in between some of those metallic dots, I decided to put a little bit of white with my Doc PH Martin's blue pre blued. I can never say that, can I? Bleed proof white. <laughs> and I'm gonna put some green centers, little dots on my white poinsettias. And I'll come back and put some more on there once it's all dry. I'll move on to the leaves though. And the leaves are done in the same way. I'm using sap green here. And I'm adding a little bit of color to the tips. So once it's wiped out, you can see that just barely. You can see that the ends are a little bit darker than the sides. So I'm putting my water in there and wiping it out. And each time you wipe it out, dry your brush on your paper towel. So rinse it clean, just wipe it on your paper towel, get as much of the water out as you can, and then add clean water to the top of the leaf. See that, just painting it on there, just like you painted the the original leaf with the watercolor, but this is just with water. And then that water pushes all that paint to the edges and it leaves that outline. So I call it this a wipeout technique. Um, other artists call it different things. I just call this a wipeout and I thought it would be fun to do it on these simple shapes so you really can see the outline on them. And we're just going to fill in. So I'm putting the petals wherever the, there's a little indent from the flower. So I'm not going to put it at the tip of the petal because it would just look like an extension of the petal, kind of. So you want to place them in between the petals. And I'm just going around and putting them about the same size as the poinsettia flower itself because what the flower is is actually the leaves. The leaves are all green and then at a certain time of year, depending where you are, they will turn red. So if they, there's, it has to do with the sun and the darkness at night and the longer the darkness is, that's when the poinsettia flower starts to turn colors, red or white or pink or um, whatever it is. This is some holly now. So I added the branch and now I am putting the dots in. I'm putting six dots so you can put more if you want. And I'm using that same brush so it's you know as big as you can handle it. And I'm using a different color because I wanted a more blue green color so this is um, Van Dyke, no, I think this is Viridian I'm using, it's Viridian, okay. We're using the Viridian. It's a blue-green, that's a really pretty color. That Just any blue-green that you have. You don't have to use the same colors I do, just whatever colors that you have in your palette. And you don't have to use Magello paints. I use Daniel Smith a lot, Winsor Newton, um, Core. I like a lot of different paints, so, you know, whatever you like, because they all have names that are the same, but through each paint manufacturer, your paint colors might differ just a little bit. So, like a Cerulean Blue in the Magello Gold series is a really bright blue, and in the Daniel Smith, it's more like a sky blue. It's the same tone, basically, but one's a little bit brighter than the other. So it depends on what I'm painting, what paint I would choose, which brand I would choose to use. So I'm placing my holly leaves here, kind of not putting them right next to each other because I'm going to go back and add more leaves on top of all of these leaves. So I'm kind of thinking about that when I'm placing them, that I want room to put another leaf on top of it so that you can see that layered effect. And of course with holly, there's holly berries. So I'm just using that same permanent red here and doing my puddles make or dots nice and high. And I'm, so they're quite big. They have quite a lot of paint in there. So it takes just a little bit extra to wipe that out because you don't have any room to spread that paint. So it's just the dots. 
So you might have to go over it a couple times to wipe out the dots because we're not spreading the paint out as much as we would on a, a leaf petal. So wherever I think some leaves are, I think some holly should go with them. So I'm filling in a little bit with some more holly up here by my branch. And I didn't show you, but I did the branch the same way. I just painted the branch on there, went back with some water and put that right on top of that branch and very carefully lifted it out so it still has that outline like that. So I'm going over here and putting these hollies. And in the holly berries, I am dropping just a little bit of blue on there just to give them some shadows where they touch. It won't show a lot, but it does give it a little bit more interest. And I'll put some in the center because now I'm thinking about, I don't want the center to be empty, so I'm filling it in. And I'm thinking about where could I add some leaves. And in some of these tight areas, the leaves might get cut off too much or it might be difficult to paint. So I'm filling those areas in with some holly berries. And then beyond that, I will put some leaves. And I'm thinking about that C shape. So I'm swooping down from the top left hand corner towards the bottom right hand corner. So I'm thinking my branch is going to go in that curved C shape. And when you do that, as you can see in the top one, don't go directly to the corner, but move it over a little bit. Because otherwise your eye will just go right to the edge of that painting. It'll stop right there. So you want your eye to continue around your painting so if there's not a corner there it'll still be have a nice flow to it but if you drop something and end it right in the corner your eye goes directly to that so here i'm dropping in some blue and then i'm wiping out these berries and like i said you have to do it a couple times And if some of them are lighter and some of them are darker, that's okay. It adds interest. If you don't like that, then you have to be very precise when you first put those dots on to make sure you have equal amounts of paint. But I like it to have different colors in it. And we'll stick a little holly leaf right in here. And I'm putting my leaves on and my berries on before I continue the branch because the branch would be underneath the leaves and the berries. So I want to make sure that I don't have to um, squeeze it in too tightly. So I want to make sure I have my holly leaves all in their spot and their berries too. And I'm just wiping out, wiping out, lots of wiping out. <laughs> and using the tip of my brush in some of those really tight areas and you can see I you know added some extra points to my leaves and some of the bigger ones because that's how they would be in nature and I'll just go up here and tuck this one in kind of curved it around the other little green lighter green leaf And that one, I added a couple extra points to it. And now, see, I'm thinking about where I want to put that branch and where I'm going to need some leaves because the branch won't be there. But maybe the leaves are coming off of the branch. Or there might be some just peeking out from a, the branch that's probably underneath there. I say to be an artist, you have to be a good storyteller. You gotta make up scenarios in your mind all the time. Like, well, that could have happened like that. <laughs> and sometimes when you make a mistake, you justify it with a story. <laughs> so I'm bringing that side branch off of my main branch that I haven't totally painted in yet, but I know where it's gonna go. So I'm just bringing in a little side branch there doing it that same way and then here's my main branch I'm just gonna sweep that one up to the left side right side sorry about that <laughs> get them confused sometimes you can see how I'm just painting it on and then painting my water on top of that and mopping it up mopping it out 
And then I want to put some more towards that um, right corner. But first I'm going to put some holly leaves by the branch up here. And there's an empty space. I can fill that in. And I will take my water and wipe it out. See, I have that paper towel in my hand at all times. And I'm just using that to wipe it out real quick. And I might as well put a couple more down here. And remember, this is only the first layer of the leaves. There's going to be a second layer of the leaves as well. So keeping that in mind when I'm placing these leaves. Here I'm going to start that second layer so you can see how that goes. So this sleeve leaf goes right on top, partly, partially, on top of the other leaf that's behind it. That was a lot of water in that one on the left, so I let that just set up a little bit first. And now I'm going to wipe that out while the other one's setting up. Now you can see that little points of those underneath leaves peeking through the top leaf. Give it that layered effect. Do the same thing up here. Just letting some of that bottom leaf poke through so it has to be dry underneath in order to put some on top so make sure they're really dry very well otherwise you'll just lift off all of it from the bottom as well so in nature petals and leaves would overlap each other so I don't want to overlap my focal point because this is more of an arranged scenario because we have white and red set of flowers there so I don't want to cover them up I want those to look placed but if I just had a branch stuck in there the leaves would overlap each other so I am going ahead and doing that in my painting and you can see as those white poinsettias are getting framed in by the foliage that they're standing out just a bit more I wanted to do this really soft and transparent. So here's another overlapping holly leaf. And I'm going to go around and overlap leaves. I'm turning my whole block of watercolor paper here with my painting on it um, as I go. So it's towards me, so it makes it easier for me to paint it rather than trying to paint them in, on sideways. So that's always nice that you can turn your paper. See how it's really starting to get a little... Oh, what am I trying to say? It's filling in better. <laughs> it's filling in and coming more to a picture rather than just placed flowers on the paper. I'm going to put some holly leaves over here. When I was a kid, this is what made me want to paint this painting because I had gone to a little art and craft show, I think it was. It could have been a flea market. Somewhere my parents took me, and there was this little kit, and it made, like, plastic flowers, so it came with some really fine copper wire, and you could make individual petals with it by forming your copper wire at the end, bring it around and tie it or twist it around, a loop twisting like a circle and then you could pinch the top and make points um, and then you would take that wire so now it has almost like a stem and a petal outline with just the wire you would take that and dip it into this plastic solution that was transparent so when you dipped it in there and then you would take it and let it dry you stick it in a little block of styrofoam and let it dry. And then you would have this transparent leaf that's on a piece of wire. So I made a whole bunch of them and I made um, little poinsettias. And I twisted them all together and put all kinds of layers in there. And then I put some fake from the silk store. We had a little craft store that would have like the stamens that you could set them inside. So I put the stamens in there, and I gave them to my grandma uh, when I was staying over there. I was making them, and 
I gave them to my grandma. So my grandma had a piece of like styrofoam that she had stuck holly branches in there and she took those little poinsettias that I had made and she added them to this arrangement that she already had on her coffee table for Christmas. So every year she'd pull that arrangement out and I always remembered having so much fun making my little glass sleeves, but they weren't glass, they were like plastic, but it was a lot of fun for me then, and it was special to me that my grandma took them out every year and put them on her coffee table. So there's my story. It's <laughs> still adding some more leaves. Now see, I doubled them up, and I'm going all the way around, and doubling them up and putting them as close to that white flower as I can. I really want to put something dark next to that white because that will bring out the white flower. I almost thought about putting a background in there, but I didn't because the flowers are transparent. So that background would show through the flowers as well. So I just left it on the white like that. It would have been a pretty one on the black paper. I hadn't thought about that before, but could have done it all in those metallic paints on a black paper. That would be really pretty. I'm going ahead and putting these leaves on, and I'm going a little darker because typically when things are closer to you, they're darker than things that are way in the background. So I'm just trying to get a little dimension by going darker on these topper ones. Top petals. <laughs> closer ones. <laughs> Okay, so there we have it. All of the petals are all um, doubled up there and just finishing up one little tiny one couple down here in the corner. So this is a good time to kind of assess your whole painting and see if there's places that you think you might want to fill it in a little bit. And then keep in mind all those curved C shapes or S shapes. Um, kind of like a florist would arrange their floral arrangement. You know, not nothing real angular or straight up and down unless you want like an abstract look. You could do it that way. But for this, we're just trying to have it real natural and flowing. So I'm just kind of looking and seeing if there's places I can fill in a little bit of an extra um, leaf or two just to make it balanced. I go through and on my little holly berries I put a few little tiny little stems in there so I just did a dot and with my double zero brush and some brown I just put really fine little stems so they look like they're connecting to something and not just floating around in space and I might as well put a couple over here to balance it out like I said so I'm adding some more berries And just taking a look at everything. Is there anywhere else I need to add? I'm also keeping in mind that I'm going to next do some pine boughs. So I got a special trick I'm going to show you there. It's a really fun little technique. So make sure you stay to the end because I want to show you that. You're going to like that. Make it really easy. Little holly. Stick another couple holly leaves over here. Fill in that little space because the pine needles won't be there. So I gotta fill in that empty space. There. Now I'm just taking a good look at it and thinking I'm gonna be ready for those pine boughs. So here's my special trick. Look at them scissors. <laughs> they must be 70 years old. They were my dad's. He used to work at General Motors since he was 19 years old. I think those are his original <laughs> art supplies then. He did like, first he did like the um, drafting and then he did um, purchasing videos. He had his own video department, production aids. So what I'm doing, I'm taking watercolor paper and I'm just cutting it into squares and doing you know, a couple different sizes, a little bit wider and a little bit um, shorter and I put I cut up a whole bunch while I was cutting them but you really only need like three or four for this whole painting you don't need to cut up that many 
I put them just just aside and I'm taking my green now I'm going to be using the olive green it's got a little bit more yellow because I want all my greens to be different and I'm going to put these branches in uh oh my dogs see something outside so they're letting me know <laughs> somebody's walking their dog or something So I am all, I'm just taking some raw umber and putting these branches in before I go with that green. So this is where I'm going to have them kind of split in a Y shape so I can have two. So whenever you're bringing the branch off from the main branch, it's kind of like a V. Instead of coming straight out at a 90 degree, you can angle it more like a V shape or a 45 degree angle. And maybe put some branches in between the flowers so that it looks like they came from somewhere. So just lightly put some branches in there. And you can overlap your leaves and maybe the tips of a flower here and there. And there. Remembering not to point them directly towards the corners. Except for that one. <laughs> no, it's a little higher up off the corner. Yeah, so I just kind of got a place to put my pine needles. And now I'm going to take the green. And I, was, no, I didn't use the... I used, yes, olive green is what I used there. You can vary your greens too, but what I did is I just painted it on the edge. Just the very edge. And now I'm going to use it like you would a rubber stamp. So I'm just going to press down that edge. And I'm going to make, pick it up, press it down, pick it up, press it down. And it's going to make little lines like the needles from the pine. So when you're doing the needles, those needles don't come straight off of the main branch. They're almost in a fan shape. So... Think about little clusters of needles rather than just lining them up straight like soldiers. They're little clusters. And it's okay if some of your paint overlaps and make darker spots. That's, that's okay. It's good if the, the paint starts to run out and it makes lighter lines. You want those variations to shine through without having to think about where would the light be hitting and would they be darker underneath. You could think about all that stuff if you wanted to. I'm trying to do this a little bit more simply. So I'm just letting the paint do its thing. So if it runs out and it makes those little needles lighter, that's good. And if it's darker from when I first started out, that's fine too. I like the variation in there. And remember, make them as much as you can in little fan shapes. And at the tip of the branch, the pine needles can go like all the way around, or you can make several little fan shapes there. It's kind of fun, though. And once your little piece of paper gets a little too damp, then go ahead and grab a new one. And just keep going through that and I'm going to add some snow on here too so I'm not worried too much about if there's a couple blobs that look funny just leave that alone because you can cover that up with the snow we're going to put on there and just go around wherever you have branches go ahead and put some more little pine needles in there I apologize that's kind of out of frame there but there you go you can see it just keep putting on some pine needles and also I'm thinking about those white poinsettias, like maybe I can tuck a little bit in there, here and there. So I'm kind of watching for where I can do that. And here I'm adding some darker pine needles, just to give it a little interest. I let them overlap over the leaves, as they would if they were just stuck into an arrangement, as on my grandma's coffee table. Just keep going around and stamping on those pine leaves. Needles. Pine needles. <laughs> Just working my way around. 
So I cut up some smaller pieces so I can get into some of those tighter spots where I don't really want to cover up too much of my flowers and some of those in-between spots. So I just made some smaller ones so I can do that. So you can make them all different sizes and just use which size works best for the part of the painting that you're working on. I'm tucking in some next to those white flowers, help them to stand out. You can't see it on camera, but those white flowers are like pearlescent. They have a shimmer to them. So this is the Doc Martin Bleed Proof White. <laughs> and I'm just taking that small double zero brush and just dabbing on some snow, thinking about how the snow collects deep on the branches and then on the top of the um, branches too. So just, and then if I have any places that I want to kind of soften or cover up, that's where my bleed proof white goes. <laughs> so that just kind of makes them a little softer and I'm covering up any bobs that I might have got in there that I didn't like. And I put a little bit on the main branch as well. Yeah, and right in there, put some snow, might snow a little bit heavier, little spots. It's your story. You tell it <laughs> however you want. There we go. I'll just put some more of this bleed proof white. I love this white. It, it can really add a lot to your painting. A oh, little snow. Thank God it doesn't snow in Florida. I had enough of it when I lived in Michigan. I got my fill and then some. <laughs> there, just kind of tuck it under on top of the point set, just here and there. Not too much of that. Okay. So, there we have it. I think we're done. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah, so I'm going to turn it here. I'll bring it a little closer so you can see it better. And I don't think you can see that shimmer on those poinsettias, but it's there from that white. And that kind of pearlized paint that I used to paint them with, with the green. A little water spot there. And grab that there. There, get it in focus for you. See, isn't that pretty how they can layer and you can see all the different petals underneath and they overlap? You can do this with anything. It doesn't have to be flowers. Anything you want it be. Just play around with this technique and see what you can come up with. I'd love to see any pictures. Leave me a comment about any questions that you might have or Show me some pictures of your paintings. I'd love to do that. Eventually, I would love to build a little community where we can all share with each other. That would be fun. So I got my quill, just a regular regular calligraphy quill out. And I put a little bit of paint on there. Maybe the consistency, um, you know, kind of like a whole melt consistency. And make sure it doesn't drip off the quill, but it'll stay in that little area where you paint it in. And once you get it flowing, you can sign your name. Usually I practice a little couple strokes on a piece of scrap paper, but I didn't hear, so I'm going to go back where it wasn't quite flowing yet and go over it again. But you can sign your name so much more easily than with a paintbrush but it's still signed with watercolor paint. So I love that technique. Thanks Sharon Rapp, my watercolor teacher, for showing me that. Okay, we're all done. Once you sign it, you're done, for the most part. <laughs> well, thank you for staying to the end, and thank you to all of those who subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy my videos and you'd like to see more, go ahead and subscribe, push the like button, and the little bell for notifications. Until we see you next time, be happy, be merry, be bright, be swift art, peace and love be with you every day. And thank you all. Bye-bye till next time.